What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. Quick question, comment question of the day. Do you guys like the face cam? Should I keep the face cam on even for like these showdown videos where I'm just talking about stuff? Let me know. It probably won't change for a couple of videos because I've pre-recorded quite a bit. Let's get into this. So what I want to explain today is why I was actually wrong with many of my takes with Meow Scarada when the season first started, when BGC first came out. Uh, but granted, many of those takes were with the uh, understanding that or with the, at the time, the understanding that uh, Paradox Forms would be allowed. But now that Paradox Forms are not allowed, we've seen heavy Meowskarada usage, and it sort of makes sense, and I want to explain why it is such a threat, why it's such a good Pokemon, and why you should probably be looking into using it. So before we do that, if you guys enjoy at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And let's go ahead and get into this. So, recently, there was a, uh, a tournament. 465 players... December 10th through 11th, Victory Road Welcome to Paldea Tournament. It was online. I didn't get to compete because I had a Christmas party to go to. I'm sorry. I have a social life, but I wish I didn't because I want to play Pokemon. Uh, but here, uh, Adrian Hurley won Colding Light uh, with a Meow Scarada and Don Dozo team. And I just want to say I'm really annoyed that this won the tournament because I built a similar team called War Crime like a week ago that I was going to record a video with. Because Revival Blessing plus Defense Boosting Don Dozo is funny, but I, I don't know. Maybe he didn't use Defense Boosting Don Dozo. It looks like he didn't because the Tatsugiri is a different color, but I don't know. All right, let's talk about the team. So we see a Miascarada with a uh, Torkoal, Don Dozo, Pom uh, Pomot, uh, Gothitelle, and uh, Tatsugiri. By the way, Don Dozo, Gothitelle, I did that. I did that. All right. Uh, but yeah, uh, if we like scroll down to like other teams in like the top 16, we see another Miascarada team paired with. Uh, Annihilate, uh, Azumarill, Goldango, uh, Mousehold, and uh, Hydreigon. This is more of a hyper offensive team because uh, we see, like, you know, Mousehold plus, like, heavy hitters. Uh, we see another sort of hyper offense team, I guess. It's more balancey now that I think about it. Mousehold can uh, apply to balance. Uh, but we see, you know, Meowskarata plus Tailwind in partners. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit further, we see another Dondozo Meowskarata team. Oh, also, you know, Sylveon, good Dondozo partner. Yeah, very good. Uh, I'm like, I'm critiquing all the Dondozo partners because, once again, Don Ductor. Okay. So, uh, that's like a joke that people who aren't watching the channel won't get. We're just like, who just found me? Uh, but yeah, no, we see more Don Do or we see more Meowskarada, uh, more Tailwind Meowskarada, uh, with Marcus Statter's team. And yeah, that's it for like top 16. But if you like scroll through like just like the top players, there's a ton of Meowskarada representation in these 41 teams. So why is Meowskarada so good? It has to do more with uh, the tools that it has and like the metagame that it exists within uh, than it has to do with like it just outright being good, if that makes sense. Uh, so basically, Meowskarada is good because of pretty much one move that it has. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with uh, Generation 8 Pokemon, we had a Pokemon named Urshifu Single Strike who had access to a move called Wicked Blow. Uh, Wicked Blow used to be 80 base power, and it would always result in a crit, and it was dark type, uh, and it had stab on it. Now it's 75 base power, a little bit of a nerf, but because it has a crit built into the move, it's not just 75 base power, it is 75 times 1.5, which, what is that? That's, uh, 37 plus 75, I think, so, uh, 112. That's 112 base power, I think. I might be wrong. I'm bad at math. Uh, so, 112 base power. In this gen. Uh, Meowskarada has a similar tool, but it's 70 base power. That is, you know, 35 plus 70. That's 105 base power. Uh, when you include the built-in crit, it has 16 PP, so there are more of it than it would be if you were using like a Wicked Blow Pokemon, like uh, Urshifu, the only Wicked Blow Pokemon. Uh, but it also gets stab on it, so that's another 50% multiplier. And it's just like a very consistent move. Having a Having a like grass type move that consistently crits is absurdly good because if you don't know how crits work, crits not only give that 50% boost in power, but it also bypasses all defensive benefits that the opponent has, bypasses all, um, what's it called? All attack drops that you have, except for burn because burn isn't an attack drop, it's a power drop. Uh, and it also is just one of the most consistent forms of damage when you only crit. 
uh, because it bypasses screens. Like, that's a huge thing. So if we take into account, like, the Pokemon that are, like, super common in this metagame, for one, Don Dozo took first place. We know what Don Dozo does. It's a water type. It has access to uh, Commander Tatsuguri at its side, which when you put it into Don Dozo, will give it uh, plus two into defense and special defense and speed and attack. It makes it a very scary Pokemon. Uh, if like you try to hit it with any physical move, it's just gonna like not care. It's gonna bounce off of it, especially if it's unaware Don Dozo, uh, which will ignore all of your offensive boosts. So that's really, really annoying to deal with. Garganical is another Pokemon that's famous for its uh, defensive capabilities because it will almost always run like, like a decently physically defensive, but mostly like special defensive set with iron defense, uh, body press, uh, curing, was it salt cure? and either protect or recover sometimes even wide guard i like recover recovers fun uh and leftovers and it's a rock type that isn't able to be status so you can't poison it you can't sleep it you can't burn it and it has half damage versus ghost moves uh also the final thing that you know meowskarata can deal with is it is uh one of the few pokemon that naturally outspeeds garchomp that is actually really really solid garchomp tends to want to go terra ground to uh, not only remove its dragon weaknesses, but also give it a adaptability boost on, on its earthquakes, which is very scary. Meowskarata takes advantage of the fact that it loses the dragon defensive benefits and is now able to hit it super effective with Flower Trick. In the case of Garganical and Dondozo, you ignore all their defensive bonuses and probably one-shot them with Flower Trick. Uh, it's just a very consistent Pokemon. 76 HP, 110 attack, while it isn't the highest when you're always critting and you're usually hitting things for super effective, it doesn't matter. 70 defense, 81 special attack, 70 special defense, 123 speed. That high speed is obviously extremely useful because like there are going to be some Pokemon even under Tailwind where if you like get an Icy Wind off on them, they're not going to outspeed you. Uh, and it also has access to the ability Protean. Now keep in mind, Protean's almost exclusively going to be ran on Choice Band Mascarada sets. Uh, but what this ability does in Generation 9, now that it's been nerfed, is the first move that it uses when it hits the field, it's going to turn into that move's type. So if you use U-Turn, you're going to turn into a bug type, and then U-Turn now has Stab on it. If you're going to use Play Rough, you're now going to turn into a pure Fairy type, and now Play Rough has Stab on it. Uh, Meowskarat is able to effectively combine this with any move set it wants and gets stab on it with like a choice band. So, you know, choice banded stab U-turn is extremely strong coming off of even 110 base attack. Uh, but most importantly, choice band stab flower trick, if you tear a grass, is an extremely powerful wall breaking tool that can one shot a lot of Pokemon. It doesn't matter if you've intimidated this thing. It doesn't matter if uh, you have like three iron defenses up if you're at plus six. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have Grimmsnarl screens up. It's going to bust through it. Uh, while Meowskarata is a bit of a glass cannon, it's able to just consistently deal with these things. Uh, basically, Meowskarata is a splashable Pokemon. Like, you could take these five Pokemon and then, like, use a different grass type, like uh, an Amoongus, and you would do just fine. But Meowskarata, if you want to take a more offensive route, will allow you to deal with things that Don Dozo doesn't want to deal with. Don Dozo has a hard time, if it's not running uh, unaware, breaking through Garganical. Sometimes it has a hard time breaking through uh, other just decently defensive Pokemon like Dash Hound. Uh, Meowskarata doesn't care. It's just very consistent. Um, another thing is Annihilate teams tend to run a lot of ways to like decrease damage to Annihilate because Annihilate is a Pokemon with uh, the move Rage Fist which uh, boosts in power every time it gets hit. So Rage Fist, if you get hit once, uh, it goes up to 100 base power, twice 150. Very easy to get boost with Annihilate uh, because of how bulky it is. Meowskarata is one of the few Pokemon that seriously threatens Annihilate despite how much damage reduction measures you might take because if Annihilate has like any chip on it, Meowskarata with like a Life Orb or like a Choice Band can come in and Flower Trick and KO it. It's very, very scary, especially if you Terra Grass. Uh, but also just the coverage that it has. It has a lot of tools. Uh, it has low kick. It has play rough. Quick attack is an option. Shadow claw is an option. Thunder punch even, which is like super weird. And it has taunt if you're running like a focus sash set. I believe the one that uh, won this tournament was actually Terra Ghost. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, Meowskarata was Terra Ghost. I don't know what the move set was on that. It might be running Shadow Claw or Terra Blast even. Uh, but that was probably like for one shotting things like uh, Terra Ghost Annihilate. Not Terra Ghost Annihilate, but like Ghost Annihilate. Um, you could probably also one shot Golden Go with uh, Terra Blast, but also at that point, you know, Knock Off would do it. But yeah, 
Point is, uh, the reason Miascarada is like super good is because it's extremely consistent damage. It's easy to splash onto a team, and there are a lot of Pokemon that are very defensive that Miascarada is able to switch in on, KO, and then you can move on with the rest of your flowcharty nature of your team and beat it. So yeah, uh, that is a brief overview of why Miascarada is good. If you guys understood, learned anything new, uh, or enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, uh, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Bye.